following video is sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. What's up, football fans? We are in the midst of the NFL season, and I'm still holding on to hope that my team will be the number one seed in the playoffs. So much so that I'm willing to place a bet to prove it. This video is in partnership with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL. And right now, they have an offer you do not want to miss. All customers can get a no-sweat bet on any same-game parlay or same-game parlay extra. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up using my promo code Philly500. And if you're a new customer, DraftKings has something extra special for you. New customers who bet just $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly. And if you're already signed up to DraftKings like me, you can get a no sweat bet on any same game parlay or same game parlay extra bet if your bet does not hit. Maximum wagering limits apply. Fan of your alma mater or home team? Combine multiple bets together for a shot at even bigger payouts. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code Philly500. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Philly500 only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Once again, I'd like to thank DraftKings Sportsbook for sponsoring today's video. And remember, use promo code Philly500. Bet $5 get $200 instantly in bonus bets, but that's promo code Philly500. The Philadelphia Eagles are sitting at a moment in the season where they could take a real stranglehold on the division, but in order to do that, they're gonna have to beat them stinking Cowboys. Yo, by the way, kick thing by here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. This is a big game. This is a gigantic game. This is a game that could set the Eagles up perfectly for the second half of the season. I'm not here to play today. I'm not here to take it late and make jokes. I'm here to double moonwalk the Cowboys' ass this weekend. That's right. Now, before we get into all of it, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. More importantly, make sure you subscribe to the most censored, the most throttled, pause, Eagles got their creator in all of the internet. If you've been subscribed for a while, I just want to thank you so much for all the support you give to me. It truly means a lot. And man, this is going to be a big game. This is going to be a big game. The ramifications of this game are huge. Not in that it's the end-all, be-all, right? There's still one more game versus the Cowboys to play. So whoever wins this game will have bragging rights for the next few weeks, but they've got to play each other again. And I look at this game, and I think the Cowboys are in a must-win situation. Like, if they really want to compete for this division, they got to win this game. You can't afford to go down two and a half games to the Eagles as the Eagles go in their bye week. I think that's that makes it a lot harder for them to win this division. But if they beat the Eagles, all of a sudden, they're what, one game out. They're right in the thick of it. And uh, they play the Giants on the Eagles' bye week, which means they'll probably win. So... This is a big game for both teams. And if you're the Eagles, if you win this game and you go up a full two and a half games, it really gives you a chance to go on a bye week rest and then get ready for a tough stretch when you got Kansas City, you have Buffalo, you have the Niners, you have Seattle, you have Dallas. That's a tough stretch of games, okay? But if the Eagles are 8-1, and, and you think about this, right? If they go 2-5 and five the next uh, five games, okay? That would put the Eagles, at, and not including the Dallas game, if they go into the bye week and they're 8 1, if they win the next two out of five games, they would be, what, 10, 10 and 3? So if that's the case, then the Eagles have the final three games the Giants, the Cardinals, and the Giants. That's three wins. I think the Eagles. If they win this game, I think you're looking at a 13 to 14 win team. But that's uh, what this game is going to set up. This game sets it all up, in my opinion. This is a huge NFC East matchup. And Mark Holmes is, you know, a year ago, he told me he never wants to bet again. He hates betting. He'll never do it. 
Now it's back. He wants to do it. He wants to do a shirt bet, right? Something where you got to wear a shirt that says something. So I need everybody to think of what Mark Holmes should have to wear if we win. Give me the best comments in the in the comment section of what a shirt should say if he if if the Eagles win. Uh, I want something really good, something that's really going to bother the hell out of them. So think about it, uh, because I don't know what to say. Um, but anyways, let's get into this game. And I'm sorry, I'm I am I am not feeling good today. I have a fever. I, I could barely talk, uh, cold, it's hitting me, uh, but you know what, we don't take off work, we don't call it sick, we just keep going, so that's what we're doing today, and uh, it is what it is, hopefully this will be cleared up by the time the game starts on Sunday, but here's the injury report for the Eagles, Cowboys are pretty much, they're pretty healthy for the most part, they got a couple guys questionable, uh, the Eagles, not so much, so here's the injury report for the Eagles, uh, Bradley Roby, shoulder, did not practice, he's out. Running back Boston Scott, personal, he's out. I don't know what's going on with Boston Scott, not really sure, but I hope everything is okay with him. Uh, don't know what's going on, but hopefully he's okay. Cornerback James Bradbury, thigh, limited practice, uh, up in the air as whether he's going to play or not, I guess. I expect Bradbury to go, um, but that's just uh, me. Tight end, Grant Calcaterra, concussion. Limited practice out. Camp Jurgens foot limited practice out. So Jurgens is not ready to play. That means Tyler Steen will get to go. I actually liked what I saw with Tyler Steen. I kind of like him better than Opeta. So I'm okay with this. Uh, but we're going to see how he does because they're going to play the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys, one thing they like to do is get pressure. They like to blitz. Uh, defensive tackle Jalen Carter, back, full practice. Defensive tackle Jordan Davis, hamstring, full practice. Guard Sue Opeta, hip, full practice. Tight end Jack Stahl, ankle, full practice. And then Milton Williams, shoulder, full practice. Now, I'll say this right off the bat. The most important ones on that injury report are Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter. I truly believe this defense goes as they go. I really believe that. You had Jalen Carter come out last week. You had Jordan Davis uh, not really playing that much with a uh, hamstring in injury. I mean, he hardly played any snaps. Uh, if you get those guys back at full strength, I think everything changes, especially with the pass rush. Okay? And when I look at this game with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, the first thing I'm going to say is this. You can't turn over the ball. You can't have the mistakes that you've had over the last few weeks, uh, many times this season, where the Eagles just give the ball away. I can't tell you how many games are close because of the Eagles' mistakes, because of the Eagles turning over the ball. I mean, things that shouldn't happen, like Gainwell fumbling in the red zone, and then I think they had another turnover down there before. You remember what happened in the Jets game? Like, the Eagles... The Eagles give too many turnovers to teams. They just give it away. Too many mistakes. If you want to win this game, you cannot do that against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you cannot be playing um, games where you're giving up two turnovers and they give up none and you're still trying to win. You have to play mistake-free football. You can't be turning over the ball. Okay, that's the first thing. And the Dallas Cowboys, I think they're they're right up there. With giving up with with takeaways, right? So I think they may be number one in takeaways. So they take the ball away, and we give the ball away. So that has to change. Okay, that's first and foremost. And when you look at the Eagles' offense, right? Um, I think I think that this game, I think the Eagles match up well with Dallas. A lot of people will disagree with me, but I really think that they do. And the reason I think that the Eagles do is because I think that the Eagles offensive line can control the Dallas Cowboys defensive line. When the Eagles have beaten Dallas and had success in the past against them, especially the last few years, it's been the Eagles' ability to run the ball. And I think that this is a week where DeAndre Swift has to go out and have a big game. I think he's going to have to have a big game. And the other thing is this. Rashad Penny is probably going to play this week. With Boston Scott out, Rashad Penny is going to wind up being dressed so they have an extra running back. Now, this is kind of similar, in my opinion, to early in the season uh, when we have going into week two where uh, Gainwell was out and then DeAndre Swift got the chance. I really, truly don't believe if Gainwell plays in week two 
that we would ever get to see what we had in DeAndre Swift. I don't think the Eagles would have done it. But they they had to put DeAndre Swift to play him, and he was able to, to show how good he was, and they had no choice but to play him uh, going forward. I really think that maybe, maybe uh, Boston Scott not being there, maybe it'll be a blessing in disguise that the Eagles will be forced to use uh, Rashad Penny, and maybe he could take advantage of that, especially in red zones. So this is an opportunity for Rashad Penny to get a chance to play. And the Eagles, all three running backs, they got to be ready to go. Uh, I think you've got to run the ball on the Dallas Cowboys. I think if you do that, I think you'll limit, you'll you'll basically neutralize uh, Micah Parsons. Uh, Dallas has the highest blitz rate, uh, I think, in the league, or one of the highest. Um, so they love to blitz. And and listen, I'm a, I agree with that philosophy. You got to blitz, and that blitzing helps out their secondary. You have Deron Bland and Stephon Gilmore, two good corners. They've been playing good. Bland has three pick sixes this year. Uh, I think the Eagles, if they come out and run the ball. I think it's going to be very hard for the Dallas Cowboys to contain all the weapons. If the Eagles are running the ball and then they go use a play action and they start throwing the ball, I think I think the I think uh, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith have plays to be made. Yes, I think Dallas has a good secondary, but I think the Eagles, I think their wide receivers can catch the ball on them. I think they can have big games. I think Devontae Smith is going to have a monster game. I think this is going to be his best game of the season. And we'll see about A.J. Brown. I think he very well could go over 125-plus yards again this week. Um, But the key for the Eagles offensively, in my opinion, is you've got to come out and establish the run. If you're running on the Dallas Cowboys, and we saw it with the Arizona Cardinals when they beat them. We saw it with the 49ers. If you can run the ball on the Dallas Cowboys, it really really screws them up. Uh, And that's what the Eagles have to do. I think you have to run the ball. You'll be able to make plays in the passing game, but you got to use the running game to set everything else up. So that, to me, is the key. DeAndre Swift needs a big game. That's what I really think. Now, when you look at the Eagles' Defense going up against the Dallas Cowboys offense. Uh, I don't worry about the Dallas Cowboys run game. It doesn't scare me at all. Okay, nobody has really been able to run against us. With Jordan Davis and Carter back in there, uh, it doesn't scare me at all. Okay, the really the only guy that really scares me on their offense, hate to say it, is CeeDee Lamb. Uh, CeeDee Lamb is a good wide receiver, and the question is, is how are the Eagles going to play him? Um, As far as Gallup, Gallup usually makes like one play against us. Uh, Brandon Cooks, I'm not really sweating too much either. Um, To me, it's all about shutting CeeDee Lamb out. And and here's the thing, when you go back and you watch, go back and watch the Eagles game Christmas Eve versus the Dallas Cowboys. One of the things that drives me nuts, what the Eagles do, is they go out there and they basically, um, they don't pressure uh, Dak Prescott. They, they, they show too much respect. They play way back. Uh, and they really don't try to get pressure on him. I think Dak Prescott's a guy that you've got to try to get pressure on. He will throw the big pick if you do that, okay? You can get him to turn over. And this pass rush on defense is going to be key. Because if you're getting to Dak Prescott, if you make him feel uncomfortable, um, you're going to give him problems all day. But if you sit there and you have nine yards back on CeeDee Lamb, if you're playing, you know, nine yards back on Gallup and and Brandon Cooks, he's going to just take the easy throws. He is going to take the five-yard throw. He is going to take the six-yard throw. He is going to take the slant. You've got to play. You've got to play aggressive with these wide receivers this week. You've got to get up on them, not be afraid to hit them off the line, and you've got to bring pressure. You can't just sit back and let Dak Prescott feel comfortable in the pocket. And they've been rolling Dak Prescott out a lot more uh, lately, and it's helped. He's very good outside the pocket. But I think the Eagles got to bring up the blitz. they got to take more chances uh, with their corners and, you know, force Dak Prescott to have to make the throw 20 yards downfield. Force him to make the accurate throws. Take the short to in- intermediate stuff away and make him make him have to beat you down the field. Let's see if he could do it. That's what I think the Eagles have to do. The pass rush is is going to be so key for the Eagles. And I do think they should blitz more. Uh, you know, this is a classic NFC East matchup. And what do these NFC East matchups always come down to? They always come down to the offense and defensive line. You got to win at the line of scrimmage. The Eagles 
are built to beat the Dallas Cowboys. They've got the offensive line to do it. They've got the defensive line to do it. But do they have the coaches to do it? That's the question, especially in defense. I went back and watched that that watch, that that Christmas Eve game. And the one thing I could tell you if you watch that game, Jonathan Gannon made it too easy for Dak Prescott. He made it too easy for him to complete easy passes, five-yard passes that turn into 12 yards after the catch, things like that. Of course, they had the big... The big panel, the, the big pass that they made was third and what thirty something. That was absolutely ridiculous. I think you got to be aggressive. I think if you play like you played the Rams in the second half, right, where they have good receivers and you force Stafford to make the throws downfield, if you play kind of like that. I think, I think you'll be okay. But run the ball, establish your run game, then you open up your pass game. You know, neutralize Michael Parsons. Then offensively, you've got to take. You gotta be aggressive. You've got to bring heat on Dak Prescott. You have to bring pressure. You're gonna have to put him in a situation where he's gotta make the big throws. And if he makes goes out and he makes the throws, then you tip your cap to him and say, All right, he did what he had to do. But I think if you get pressure on him, if you blitz him and you don't sit back and you allow him to get comfortable in that pocket, he's going to kill you. If he doesn't, and he's got to worry about the pass rush, uh, this will open up everything defensively for the Eagles. Uh, And I think the Eagles are built to beat this team and to do it. But they've got to be put in the right situations. So I'm really interested to see how these coaches, um, you know, how, how they come about into this game that's what I really think and listen if Jalen Hurts is on a bum knee I don't want him running around I don't want him run a ton let's get Brad let's get Rashad Penny in and let's see what he can do that's what I want to see so when I look at this game and I make a prediction for this game I I honestly think this is going to be a tight game a close game it's going to be a nail biter these kind of games usually are and at the end of the day though I think the Eagles get the job done I think they're at home they're playing at home. I expect them to go out, and I expect them to win. I've got the Eagles winning a close game, 24-21. to 21. I think it'll be one of those fourth-quarter games, and I think a late turnover by Dak Prescott. Um, he's going to overthrow CeeDee Lamb right into James Bradbury's hands of all the people, and that'll clinch the game. I got the Eagles 24-21, and then you know what? We take the win. We go into bye week. You're 8-1. You feel great about it. But you know what? You still got to play Dallas again. So we can't sit there and act like we've won and we beat Dallas for the rest of the year. It's all over. No, no. We're going to have to face them again. This this is only for bragging rights for a few weeks. It's not really anything more than that. And uh, the Eagles, it's a tough game. I think if you look at the way the Eagles have played certain situations, right? You look how they played the Miami Dolphins offense. If you look how they played the second half of the Rams game and they played that offense, I think this team has the ability to shut offenses down and be a lot better. But they've got to play the right scheme. They've got to adjust things a little bit. You can't be giving up easy targets for Dak Prescott. You can't give them all the underneath stuff. They're going to have to stop that. And if they do, then I think the Eagles will win this game, which I'm expecting them to do 24 24- 21. Now, you will see me again uh, tomorrow night, Philly Shakedown Podcast, as we preview more in depth the Eagles, Cowboys. In the meantime, I'm going to go take some ibuprofen and probably try to go to sleep early because I am feverish and I am not feeling too hot. Uh, With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it. So a lot of you guys always ask me, what happened to Maximus? What happened to Maximus? Remember when he was a little kitten? This is Maximus now. Gigantic cat. What's up, buddy? You okay? He likes to pet me. He's always with me. He's always at the corner of the bed or something. Well, I feel he's like my producer. But this is Maximus. Uh, they go from looking like this. They go from looking, becoming that. Starting like this. And then becoming like that. They get huge. What is up, baby doll? All right, Denzel Washington out.